Now this is the St. Anthony of Padua channel and today I want to focus on the, the story of the Bereans. Uh, many times you'll hear Protestants refer to the Bereans as a model of, or the model of example of someone who practices Sola Scriptura. We see that, uh, you know, they, according, if you listen to a Protestant pastor or whoever, they'll say, look, the apostles came to them preaching Christ in the in the scriptures and the Bereans sat there and analyzed what they had to say and tested it and said yep Paul you are preaching the truth and they were noble because they they looked at the scriptures to test whether or not what Paul said is true that's pretty much the gist and that, that's what we as that's what we must do also according to the Protestant that we must test everything with the scriptures as the Bereans tested Paul with the scriptures now I'm going to say that that notion of of being a Berean or what happened with the Berean Jews there is not at all what is taking place. So let's just look at this particular passage briefly. And it's out of Acts 17. Now, before we look at the Bereans or before this account, Paul, St. Paul and St. Silas were in Thessalonia. And when they were in Thessalonia, they, they went to the synagogue, which was their custom, and they preached uh, the gospel there and preached Christ there. And many converted in their synagogues. Many, and and the, the, many, of the Jew, many Gentiles and many people converted. But there were many Jews that did not. And they created an uproar. And out of jealousy and envy, they created a tumult in the city and basically threw out, ran out the apostles from Thessalonia. And they ended up in Berea. So the, the section come that we're going to look at from Acts chapter 17, where the story of the Bereans comes, is in verse 10. It says, But the brethren immediately sent away Paul and Silas by night unto Berea, who, when they were come thither, went into the synagogue of the Jews says, Now these were more noble than those in Thessalonia, who, receiving the word with all eagerness, daily searching the scriptures, whether these things were so. Now, let's look at some of the details here. It says, Now they're more noble than those in Thessalonia, because they received the word with all eagerness. Now notice the diff notice what it says here that these they were noble because they received the word with eagerness. They didn't approach the apostles with an attitude of skepticism or with this a critical heart. They had a open heart, one that was willing to hear what the apostles had to say and embrace their message. They were eager to hear it, which was very different in contrast to the Thessalonian Jews. That's what made them more noble. They were open to the messengers of God and to hearing what they had to say and were eager to learn it. It was a very humble attitude, a very open attitude, a very teachable attitude, one willing to learn, willing to learn and sit at the feet of the apostles to hear the message and to understand how, understand how the scriptures teach about Jesus Christ. That's the attitude. That's what they did. They daily were searching the scriptures, whether these things be so. How how are these things happening? How 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 does Christ fulfill these particular passages? Does he fulfill these particular passages? Man, that's amazing. I mean, notice see the attitude. The attitude of the brain is very different than what we from what I at least I hear how Protestants will interpret this, saying, Well, I'm gonna test what Paul says by by the scriptures. I'm testing Paul. And if he meets my test, then I'll agree. So basically, what was noble about the Bereans is that they were they basically challenged Paul's message with their interpretation of Scripture. They said, mm, "Yep, that fits. That yep, that's what we. Yep, that makes sense. Yep, I I accept that." But that's not the attitude of the Bereans at all. The Bereans didn't come with that skeptical attitude. They came with eagerness to hear what Paul had to say, and they were open to that message and they were willing to hear Paul out and embrace the message that Paul said and embrace Paul's understanding of the scriptures and how Jesus fulfilled them. 
very different heart. In fact, that's in fact, and if anything, the the Protestants would seem to be more like the Jews of Thessalonica, who rejected the message of of the of Paul, and said, "Dear, this this message is nonsense," and they run him out of town. You know, <laughs> would the would the Bereans have been noble if they would have been skeptical of Paul's message because it didn't fit with their interpretation, and they ran the apostles of our Lord out of town because they rejected. Paul's message due to their own wrong, but maybe goodwilled interpretation. So no, that, that's ridiculous. What the Brians did was that they, they were open and willing to hear what Paul had to say. As a Catholic, this is what we do. We sit at the feet of our bishops and our priests and we learn the faith from them. Okay. Now, Paul, now the, the, Bereans, the Bereans, keep in mind, the, the, the Bereans were Jews, so they had those particular scriptures, and so they were able to look at those scriptures. But this is in no way, no way to demonstrate that uh, we're only to use the scriptures and test everything with the scriptures. Okay, Paul just happened to be teaching Christ from the scriptures, so obviously the Bereans are going to, out of their eagerness to learn, we're looking at the scriptures also and, and searching them because that's what Paul was teaching out of, teaching them out of, okay? But, like, for instance, our bishops and priests can be teaching us things of the faith, such as the Mass or whatever, and we can still have the same Berean spirit because we're willing to search the fathers and understand what the fathers say about these things and, and whether they be so, you know, because they're teaching us also what was passed down through the tradition. Just the same way, if the if our bishops and priests, who are the successors of the apostles, were teaching us the prophecies of Christ in the in the scriptures, we would open the scriptures and and willingly learn and, and sit at their feet as well. In that regard, that's the Berean attitude. the The Berean attitude is one of 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 open heart and willing to hear and learn uh, from the apostles, not a skeptical heart, not a skeptical heart willing to challenge. The messengers of Christ. There's so I hope that kind of puts that idea to bed. That the true Berean, the true Berean, is one who's willing to hear the messengers of Jesus Christ and listen to what they say. Look at the authorities they use. Look at the sources they use, and 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 just submit ourselves and our and our mind and our heart to those to the messengers of Jesus Christ. That's what a Berean is. All right. And the Protestant isn't that because they don't submit themselves to the messengers of Jesus Christ who are the bishops and their successors. They reject that message. In fact, they only really submit to their own their own understanding of the scriptures. Okay? Because if someone comes to them preaching something that they, re, that they don't agree with, they say, I, well, I don't agree with that. That doesn't fit what we believe the scriptures teach. And so I'm going to be a Berean and reject you. <laughs> okay. That's just not what it means to be a Berean. I hope that shows that this is not teaching that Scripture is the only authority. It just shows they use Scripture. Yes, they use Scripture because Paul was using Scripture, so they were using Scripture. If Paul would have been preaching Christ some other way and with using some other thing, they would have looked at that too if they had it. You know, For instance, if Paul would have gone to uh, the Gentiles and was preaching Christ in creation or preaching the God, preaching God through, through the creation or whatever, then if the an Abrian attitude and Abrian heart would have been someone who would have been open to that and submit and listened and recognized, yes, you know, yeah, I could see God in the creation. That, yeah, God is the creator of all. That would have been a Abrian attitude and Abrian heart as well. There's another passage in Acts that I think is shows a Berean, a Berean spirit, a Berean heart. And that is the story of Philip and the Ethiopian eunuch. In this particular passage, Philip meets the Ethiopian eunuch reading the book of the prophet Isaiah. And he asks him in verses 30 of chapter 8 if he understands what he's reading. He says, do you understand this passage? And the Ethiopian eunuch reading the, reading the prophet Isaiah says, 
I, how can I unless someone shows me it? And he desired Philip, he says he, he says he desired Philip to come up and teach him. And so Philip taught him the passage. And the passage happened to be from Isaiah 53, where it says, He was led as a sheep to the slaughter, and like a lamb without a voice before his shears, so openeth he not his mouth, so on. And the Ethiopian eunuch, or Philip, showed the Ethiopian eunuch from that particular scripture that he was speaking of Jesus Christ, because the, the eunuch asked him, who is he speaking of? Who is this prophet speaking of? Is he speaking of himself? Or is he speaking of uh, of another man? And so, you know, he had a question about it. I mean, he, he was open to hearing. He didn't know. He was open. He, he, he sought this particular minister of Christ to teach him and he was eager to learn. He had an eagerness and he opened, he was seeing whether these things be so. How can these things be so? And he listened to the minister of Philip, the minister of Christ, the deacon Philip. And he was baptized there. And he believed. Both the, the Ethiopian eunuch and the Bereans demonstrate that Berean spirit, okay? The Berean spirit of openness of heart, of eagerness to hear the messengers of Christ. That's what it means to be, to be a Berean. So next time you hear someone say, you need to be a Berean, it doesn't mean to challenge everything with your, with your understanding of what the scriptures mean. You know, what it means to be a Berean is to come and eat with eagerness to listen to the authorities Christ has set up, to listen to them with eagerness as they teach you the faith, and to study that so that you understand it more deeply, to see how will these things be so. That's what it means to be a Berean, to have a Berean spirit. And that Berean spirit is found in the Catholic Church, in the Catholic faith. It's not found among those who reject Jesus Christ and his apostles through heresy and schism, which is what the Protestant church is. Ave Maria.